Good morning. This is June 22nd, 2018, and we are doing external organization financing requests um, interviews. So would you please say your organization name and your individual names? I'm uh, Sister Teresa Ann Wolf, and I'm representing the Watertown Initiative to Prevent Sex Trafficking. I'm Alexandra Vanilla, and I work at the monastery. Thank you. And how much money are you requesting? I believe we're requesting $4,500. Okay. And you've filled out the application form, and it is complete. Thank you. And I will just let you give me your pitch. Okay. Well, um, I will begin saying <clears throat> why this is important, because we know that there's been an increase in sex trafficking. It's a world problem. It's a state problem. And it's very much a local problem. And, um, you know, we, we, we've been told that within two years that um, sex trafficking will become the main crisis after guns and drugs. And some people are saying that it is already number one in the world, the major issue of sex trafficking and especially, well, it's part of human trafficking, and um, sex trafficking affects South Dakota especially because of the high number of Native American women and children that are, that are trafficked. I believe about 40% of um, the cases in South Dakota, 40% involve Native American women and children. And in the statistics that we have, that in South Dakota, it's estimated that 4,000 children are victims of child sexual abuse each year. And in um, 2015, there were 188 reported cases in Northeast South Dakota, and 49 of these cases were from Watertown, from this area. And then uh, again, in one year span between March 2016 and March 2017, there were 77 recorded victims of sex trafficking within a 100-mile radius of Watertown. And then also we are hearing more and more about um, the need for, um, for education about the dangers of social media because traffickers and, uh, and uh, the clients, the Johns, more and more uh, are on the internet looking for victims. And um, uh, many times the victims who are young, um, teenagers, um, are sometimes are very naive about giving personal information about themselves. They think they're having um, a friendship relationship with another teenager. And in actuality, they are, um, they're being groomed by somebody who might be 30 years old who is a sex trafficker or a John, a client looking to buy sex. And uh, also we know that in Watertown, you know, we are hearing a lot about uh, the methamphetam methamphetamine uh, crisis. And uh, there have been um, two forums uh, in, the, in the past year. We've attended both of those because we were invited to be there with our information and to talk to people. And the speakers um, uh, one of, uh, said that there definitely is a connection between the drugs, uh, the methamphetamines, and sex trafficking. One of the victims who was a recovering uh, methamphetamine addict and who also was a recovering um, sex trafficking victim, a survivor, said that um, her boyfriend sold her repeatedly to, uh, to pay for the drugs. So um, this affects us very much in this area. And uh, I, am, um, I, am, I am pleased with a um, with degree of uh, collaboration and the partners that we've established in, in here. Uh, we <coughs> We uh, basically, we do uh, education and prevention. So first of all, we 
um, it's awareness raising so that the community knows that this is an issue. And at the beginning, when we did this, it was people met us with disbelief. They said, no, this can't possibly be happen, happening in this area, or it's not happening. And, and so now with education and awareness, they're saying, yes, it is happening, and what can we do to prevent it? So we do education and prevention so that people, first of all, become aware that it is a huge problem all over the world, but it is a problem in South Dakota. Uh, we have been told um, that sex trafficking is a p issue in every community in South Dakota. And, and that, so it is, it is urgent, it's imperative that we educate people, first of all, to know what is it, and then to recognize it, what are the signs, how can you tell when somebody is being trafficked, and then what can you do about it, meaning reporting it so that there is some hope. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. Um, in your application, you st say that your grant funding was unexpectedly terminated in June 2017. And I'm just wondering who was providing the grant? Okay. It was the Catholic Health Association, Catholic Health Initiatives. And the monastery belongs to that. It was a um, because we had a hospital that, that belonged to the Catholic Health Initiatives. And uh, the foundation is based in Denver, and it, is, um, it covers various states. And um, they, um, they were having their own financial issues. And so several of us, I in this state, I was the only one from South Dakota who applied. There was an, uh, a sister in uh, Nebraska, she also had was working with sex trafficking, and uh, both of us were 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 denied uh, the renewal of that, uh, and it was because of internal financial issues that the foundation was experiencing. So, what's the status of that for this next year? Has it been reissued, or is it not? I don't think so. I, from what I can tell, their, their issues are ongoing, their financial issues are ongoing, and so what they did was they did some, um, I guess, retrenching, reorganization, which means that some areas are just um, deleted from their areas of interest. So we, um, we um, will be probably um, applying to another foundation for some major funding um, to make up for that shortfall. We did apply to, well, we did, we did apply to various foundations, and uh, one foundation um, rejected us, but saying that the concept was very good, that we should refine that and apply again in September. So we will d be doing that. And, um, we also applied to the um, Conrad Hilton Fund for Catholic Sisters, and we received that grant, and that is running for a year, and then we're not eligible to renew that grant. Um, so we are looking for other um, foundations, and we have applied to the Watertown Community Foundation. They have been very helpful. Okay. Um, you mentioned 49 cases from Watertown last year. How do you know that? Where, where does that information come from? From my, um, from the sources here, from the, um, um, the, let's see, in 2015, I said 188, oh, the 4,000 cases um, estimated in, uh, in, of child sexual abuse each year. And that, the source of that is, is the CDC. But how do you know that 49 cases were from Watertown? I didn't, I was not aware we had any record of any cases in Watertown. 
I'm just wondering who, how you got that information that there were 49 cases in Watertown. From the source that's listed here, CDC 2000, the year 2016. Okay, so now, off CDC, mm -hmm. okay. Yes. And does the police department get involved with the CDC? Um, I'm not aware. I'm not aware. I just use that as my as my source of information. Okay. And e you said you've been told that it's a problem in every community. Um, by whom? Who who um, has told you that it's a problem in every community? In um, the source for that is um, the DVD from um, Hidden in Plain Sight sex trafficking in South Dakota, and the former um, U.S. District Attorney, um, is it Brandon Johnson? Okay, is I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, it was Johnson, it was <coughs> Tim Johnson's son. Oh, okay. And at that time, he was, he's, n he's no longer in that position. But um, he, he stated that publicly at, uh, during an interview and that's and that is um, um, that is on that uh, DVD which has been used um, widely in South Dakota okay. because it talks about uh, why what are what is what are the unique trafficking venues in South Dakota and so he was talking about well, he mentioned the main ones, you know, uh, the Sturgis Spike Rally and pheasant hunting season and the fact that uh, South Dakota has nine reservations and his, uh, Native American women and children are especially vulnerable for various reasons. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if it's actual um, cases that have been um, investigated and, and um, actual evidence determine or if it's it's more of a gut feeling that it probably exists that we statistically mm -hmm. probably would have about 49 cases or if there were actually cases that were discovered mm -hmm. it just is that because it's kind of a hard thing yes to yes and and generally this kind of crime is underreported yeah. because a lot of times really nobody knows about it. Right, so and, and uh, that's why I'm curious if we know there have been 49 cases. Well, usually if that's cases- That's shocking to yeah, me. Yeah, usually if cases are tracked, you know, if, if they give specific numbers, it's those cases that they know about. Mm -hmm. You know, that, um, so that would be, um, you know, like the estimated 4,000, that's just that estimated. However, when it says 49 cases, that, that was the information mm -hmm. that I read, you know, specific information. Mm -hmm. um, how will you measure your success? Well, we uh, sometimes by the feedback that we get, because uh, sometimes that um, from qualitative research and quantitative research, you know, sometimes we do evaluations after, um, after a presentation uh, we know from uh, comments that we've made, you know, that we've heard from uh, people. And um, so, for example, um, in uh, May 2nd, for the film that we had um, that, was, uh, free, that was free to the public, and um, the questions and answers, the questions during that time and the interest shown, even the attendance, uh, and, and comments that people made, we had to, um, we had to cut it off at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. And people still stayed and mm -hmm. talked and had questions. Um, so that is one, um, one indication. Also, we have like a steadily growing, um, um, a, uh, steadily growing um, friends, you know, on Facebook. You know, uh, we also have, um, um, increased, well, a steadily growing base of people who, who give donations, and they say specifically to further this work, because they said it's needed and it's necessary. Sure. And sometimes 
Um, sometimes before I do a presentation, I'll say, well, how many of you have ever heard or know about sex trafficking? And maybe one or two, you know. Then after we finish, we'll say, okay, do you feel confident now, or do you feel informed uh, better informed now and confident in what to do if you would become aware of what in, in a sex trafficking mm -hmm. uh, case. I think um, for the future, and I know you're just kind of getting started now, mm -hmm. it would be helpful to have that documented, the, the things that you're talking about, like in mm -hmm. such and such date, we had so many um, Facebook friends and mm -hmm. the you know maybe you can hand out mm -hmm. a, a question you probably do hand out a questionnaire what do you know about it and yeah. say you know in and this date 93 percent of the respondents said they were not aware a problem existed mm -hmm. and then the next year you show that number dropped to 87 percent mm -hmm. and then you know down to 82 something mm -hmm. like that to show mm -hmm. that your efforts in educating the public mm -hmm. are actually working mm -hmm. and and I'm not saying that I don't think they will work I'm just yeah. saying if you can somehow yes. get a very intangible thing mm -hmm. into a measurable format that we can track mm -hmm. that will be helpful yes. to those who are looking at whether or not to put taxpayer dollars yes. to the program yes. and and I I think that I can speak freely on behalf of the council and definitely for myself that we think this is important work that you're doing mm -hmm. and last year when it wasn't funding wasn't funded it was um, more a statement of is it appropriate for um, taxpayer dollars mm -hmm. from our community which are very limited mm -hmm. to be spent on such a topic so mm -hmm. with that in mind um, that's what the council has to be able to mm -hmm. defend is that mm -hmm. this is a good use of tax dollars which mm -hmm. are in very very limited mm -hmm. supply and last year they were in a smaller supply than they had been the year before mm -hmm. i don't know what the situation is yet for this year but yes. that's always helpful yes. the more um, documentation that you can give on how your efforts are making a difference. Yes. One way that, we d uh, that we've done with tracking is to check on the, this, the statistics. You know, there's a national hotline to call. Mm -hmm. Then we can track how many calls were made from South yes, Dakota. absolutely. How many of these calls were, uh, were followed up on? How many cases came from these calls? Yes. And, so, and then there's been an increase. Yes. And so, so like sometimes when people say, well, sex trafficking seems to be increasing, is it increasing or is the reporting increasing? Right. right. Because as people know about sure. this, then they, they're more apt to report. Right. And so we've been having those, uh, you know, we have those statistics available to us. And we also, uh, we also ca uh, have track, we can also keep track of the cases, you know, like federal cases, how many cases have been, um, have been brought and, and have been followed through with because um, that, is an, that is another troubling issue that is very difficult to prosecute these cases. But there has been an increase and um, I mean, that has nothing to do with us, you know, mm -hmm. with our organization, but saying that because of awareness that um, more cases are reported and have, you know, and there are now more resources to prosecute these cases. Because as long as the traffickers can, can act with impunity, they're not, they're, you know, they're gonna flock to South Dakota. Mm -hmm. You know, and we've, we've heard that our laws are weak. You know, mm -hmm. that, you know, when we were nationally um, assessed, that, you know, we got an F. Now we are on a D. <laughs> <laughs> However, every year our state legislature legislators are proposing bills to tighten up the laws, to um, to uh, prosecute traffickers, and to provide services to provide treatment for the victims. S and that I mean that's a very important area. So we we don't do that. We can because we're not qualified to do that. Mm -hmm. But. Um, but the treatment and you know and so 
this is, this is, you know, like you said, this is like, this is something that's important, like to Watertown, and to the state. Mm -hmm. And um, last week, I attended um, a meeting of the East River Human Trafficking Task Force, and talking about all these issues and how all groups can be working collaboratively. You know, uh, law enforcement agencies. Um, um, agencies to pro that provide treatment for victims and people who do the educational prevention kind of work. And that input is going towards uh, an application for a federal grant for all of South, you know, for South Dakota to address this problem. Mm -hmm. See, and again, it means everybody working together with each, P you know, each agency has a unique contribution. And if we work together, you know, then we can, we can tackle, we can, we can win this. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay. Do you have any other um, comments? I think maybe, uh, <coughs> you mentioned Facebook. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, um, Alex wants to say something, because she does a lot of our <laughs> Facebook work. <laughs> and that's, that's important. Yeah, we uh, just run different, you know, awareness things, education through Facebook. Um, whether it's social media, you know, um, or articles or different things that are happening it within the state. Um, but Facebook, too, is also a way that people reach out. So mm -hmm. even after we, um, you know, the trafficking, um, or the, the video that was played mm -hmm. through the Watertown Area Community Foundation had funded that, you know, we've been promoting that um, through the social media. But even after that, people reached out on Facebook to, to individuals and other um, groups to, to join the coalition. So it's not just, you know. That movie was I Am Still Here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I forgot it too. Yeah. But it's a way for other people to, um, and other people who are um, on the coalition to kind of keep in contact and see what's mm -hmm. happening and, and share it, you sure. know, when they're. Yeah. Yeah. Social media is very powerful. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can't ignore it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. No. And no. Um, in, in May in 2017, we, uh, we sponsored a, a child sexual abuse and exploitation training, which was for law enforcement and health care personnel. So um, we, we try to, to see what, what, would, what is needed, how we can help you know, with education issues, like for law enforcement and, and healthcare personnel, um, working again with other people. Mm -hmm. um, also, I don't know, um, you know, we, f you know, for our uh, application, you know, we mentioned the importance of, of billboard education. And that's, that's important for us, and we've got, gotten a good response because as we work on a billboard, uh, with Stein signs, you know, they tell us, okay, if you have a billboard here, like 4,000 cars pass every day, we'll see that message. You know, that, that is important, you know, that's a great means of education. And I don't know if you've seen them all, this one, mm -hmm. and this one, and then this one. That was an older one, right? Yeah. And then sometimes we have a face, this is a special face for during um, um, pheasant hunting. the pheasant hunting season. Right. Yeah. Um, electronic. Yeah. Silver. Yeah. And that's, <coughs> an, uh, and we yeah, also. Those are powerful images. Yeah. And, and we. You could share those on Facebook as well. I think that mm -hmm. would be mm -hmm. very impactful. Those, yeah. Mm -hmm. They probably can't see the, the images on the, yeah. um, on the mm -hmm. video, but mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they're kind of attention grabbing yeah <laughs> and I I uh, we have I have a packet of information for you uh, just to look at so for example I talk about the lip balm project in the application mm -hmm. okay the lip balm is something it's something that really originated in the Sturgis uh, bike rally mm -hmm. and and so what happens because it's very hard I mean, it's dangerous to just approach a victim and say, "Are you? Do you need help? Are you in yeah. trouble?" You know, right. and so, but everybody in an outdoor event can use lip balm, you know. And so, this lip balm says, "Are you forced to do something you do not want to do? 
Are you threatened if you try to leave? Do you see a young person being exploited? If so, call, and there's a national hotline, and um, the text, or a text. Excellent. And this has been a marvelous project that young people like to become involved in. Mm-hmm. And, and so, like, so like groups like the Kiwanis mm-hmm. have helped us with this, and sometimes church groups, um, youth groups. Um, so it, uh, our education um, really does, we reach a lot, a lot of people. Yes. You know. Well, I'm going to scan in the material okay. so that the council and the public can look it over. Mm-hmm. And we're about out of time. If, yes. um, if there's anything else you want to add in just a few seconds, okay. go ahead. And, um, but I thank you for all the work that you did okay. to put together your applications. Very, very helpful. And um, this will, it's a public process, mm-hmm. so um, anybody will be able to have access to this mm-hmm. video and, and hear your request and see the materials that you're providing. And the okay. council will act on this through the okay. budget process. Okay. So thank you for coming today. You're Appreciate welcome. It. And I, I'm very grateful to the coalition and to everyone who's partnering with us in this very important initiative. And I thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity. Sure. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. Right. Mm-hmm.